Why does filtering work? How are we able to enhance the bass in our audio players? There is one secret behind it all. Convolution. Hi everyone, this is Jan Wilczek from thewolfsound.com and today we're gonna talk exactly about the operation of convolution. In order to fully master filtering, be it finite impulse response, FIR filtering, or infinite impulse response, IIR filtering, one need to understand well the operation of convolution. And that is what we're going to do in this video and a few following ones. We're going to dig deep to fully understand the topic. So are you ready? Let's start with the definition of convolution. Convolution can be seen as an infinite sum of samples of one signal multiplied with samples of another signal, which is time reversed and delayed. This is maybe not very intuitive because, well, who would like to directly evaluate an infinite sum? But it turns out that if the signals are finite, it is not so hard to do. And even if they are infinite, we can still somehow calculate the output of convolution. Now, there are basically two ways to get more solid intuition behind the operation of convolution. We can fix one of the indices, be it n or k, and then observe what happens at the output. Let's fix n first. Well, what happens if we fix our n to be equal to zero? Well, at the output we can see that we have only the product of the first sample of the input signal and the first sample of the impulse response. Well, what happens if we increase our time index? Then we can see that somehow our x of zero, our first sample of the input signal, has moved further down the line because it now waits the second sample of the impulse response. At the same time, we add to it the first sample of the impulse response weighted with the second sample of the input signal. It means that each sample that enters the buffer, the filter's buffer, weights its according sample of the input response. And the outcome is summed over all viable products at the given time index n. There is also another way of looking at it. We can fix k, for example. What happens then? Well, it turns out that we, at the output, get the sum of the delay and weighted impulse response of the filters, and the corresponding weights are the subsequent samples of the input signals. It's best to understand it through an example. Let's consider our signal x having four samples and our impulse response h having just three samples. The result of the convolution operation between these two signals will look as the following. Well, it's not very informative, is it? Then let's use some color coding and see what happens if we only use certain samples of the input signals, which is equivalent to fixing the index k and looking at the output over the time index n. Well, if we only insert the first input sample, at the output we'll get something like this, which is basically a scaled version of the impulse response. Well, what happens if we insert only the second sample of the input signal? Then the output is not only weighted, but also delayed. In this way, we can process the remaining samples and then, at the end, sum up over all the received delayed and weighted impulse responses. The result is exactly equivalent to what we obtained before. Just as a quick note at the end, we can also define convolution in the continuous domain for the continuous signals. As you could expect, then the infinite sum changes to a definite integral over infinite time. Makes sense, right? <laughs> to summarize, in this video we've looked briefly at the definition of the convolution operator 
in the discrete and the continuous domain. And we also provided some intuition. How can we look at convolution? So we can always imagine convolution as the operation of filtering. And looking at filtering, we can either fix the index n, and then we look only at the nth output sample of our filter, or we can fix the time index k. And in this case, we look at the impact of the k input sample over the whole time after passing through the filter. I hope that you enjoyed this video and if you did, please hit the thumbs up, subscribe to the channel and write a comment down below if you found this video useful, maybe share it with a friend. I always appreciate it. Then I also encourage you to check out the full article over at dwolfsound.com. I put the link to it in the description below the video. Other than that, I would like to invite you to follow the next videos on convolution because we have barely touched the surface of it and there is much more to cover. Take care.